Katie and Bonnie who are going to be helping us with the demonstration. So in just a few moments, hopefully, our tiger Chelsea will come down to do the demonstration for us. Here at Zoo Atlanta, we do positive reinforcement, which means it is completely optional to do the training. So what happens is the keepers will give her a cue. If she does the behavior, she'll get a treat, which what do you guys think a tiger gets for a treat? Me. Me. Yes. Tigers are carnivores, so they wouldn't get a steak here per se, but here we, um, they get ground beef, not like the ground beef we buy at the grocery store, but it's everything but um, the central nervous system, so all the organs, the bones, all those good minerals are in there for the tiger. So hopefully she'll come down in just a second, but Chelsea is a Sumatran tiger, which is the smallest species of tiger. We also have a male tiger, his name's Kavi. Tigers are solitary, so they take turns being out on exhibit. Chelsea. And Chelsea is definitely doing a great job of exhibiting her choice to come down. <laughs> but Chelsea is highly food motivated. She likes doing this behaviors to get the treats. Did you have a question? That's a good question. So they don't have the central nervous system just because brain matter can have diseases like mad cow and stuff like that. Good question. It's just precautionary. Does anyone have any ideas why would we do this kind of activities with our tigers, this kind of training? Any ideas? No? All right. Well, one reason we do this is it makes taking care of tigers a lot easier. Um, vet care is a lot easier with the tiger that will listen to you. So our tigers, we're actually able to do these cues and behaviors with them, and they can. Um, the keepers will actually touch them gently with some kind of a stick or something to get them used to vaccinations. Chelsea actually had cubs in 2011, and she was trained to spread out on a board with a hole cut out of it so we could give her an ultrasound of her cubs. So it's really, really helpful when um, the tigers want to do these kind of behaviors to look at them. We'll also give them targets, and they can put their paws up so we can see them. They also do a stretch behavior so we can see under their bellies, stuff like that. Another reason we do this kind of a training is it's fun for them. It's enrichment. It's something for them to do. We give them toys, too. If you guys want to see, this is actually a tiger toy. And this was for our cubs, and they had it for about an hour, I've been told. So you can see how strong they really are. An adult tiger would get a much, much bigger toy than this. Look at what I'm standing on. I'm even shorter. I'm even bigger. All right, well, we're still giving Chelsea a chance to come down. Hopefully, she will. Um, does anyone know how many Sumatran tigers are left in the wild? Any guesses? Probably not a lot. Not a lot. That's a, less than a thousand. Good guess. Any guesses? I think 500. Less than 500 still, yeah. All right, yay, Chelsea. There's about 300 to 400 left in the wild. But there's only about 300 to 400 Sumatran tigers left in the wild. And the main reason this is because of habitat loss. Have you guys ever heard of palm oil? Anyone in the audience, palm oil? Yes? All right, so if you haven't heard of palm oil, it's a vegetable oil we use in a lot of different products, from shampoos to the food we eat, all sorts of stuff. And palm oil is harvested in places where Sumatran tigers live. That's why we want to make sure we're using sustainable palm oil, which means it's good for the environment, it pays the workers fair wages, all that good stuff. And you guys can actually use an app from the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo. We're okay. And you can also use the round table on sustainable palm oil to look up the products you're using. If there's a product on there you guys like to use and they're not using sustainable palm oil, make sure to write them. Um, let them know that you care. A lot of companies, too, do use sustainable palm oil, but they don't market it. So we're got, trying to get them to make sure to market it. With, do we have the symbol on here? But they'll use a little orangutan because Sumatran orangutans live in the same place as the tigers do. So Cool stuff. Make sure to look it up either on your phone or you can use the computer, all that kind of stuff. And we might be in luck. Chelsea might be coming down. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she's pretty, she's, 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 she's
All right, and Chelsea gets another treat during training that she only gets during training. That's goat's milk. It's about this much goat's milk, just a third, maybe less of goat's milk, and the rest is water. It's very heavily watered down because adult cats actually can't drink milk. It gives them a tummy ache, their last toast intolerance. So she only gets that when she does training, and believe me, they love it anyway. And you can see there's the cue, and she did the behavior, so now she's going to get her reward, which is a big piece of meat. As you can see, doing that targeting behavior would make shifting a tiger, moving a tiger, checking on a tiger much, much easier. And just like people, all tigers have their days. Chelsea's kind of choosing to do her own thing today, but hopefully we'll get some more behaviors out of her. If anyone has any questions, just sh shout them out, raise your hand, you can let us know. We'll keep doing the demonstration as long as Chelsea wants to keep participating. Yeah. Like I mentioned, we do have a male and a female tiger, Chelsea and our male, Kavi, who's off exhibit right now. Um, Chelsea and Kavi are part of a species survival plan, which means we want them to mate, we want them to have babies. Chelsea had cubs in 2011, but since then they've grown up and moved to different zoos, so we're hoping this year maybe for some more. But we're just waiting on Chelsea for some signs that she's ready to be put with Kavi. How many, how many pounds of meat do they eat? So she gets anywhere from about six to nine pounds of meat a day. You done that and then one day they have a knuckle bone for casting, kind of like they would in a wild, you know, they make a big kill, they're going to gorge themselves, and they're going to go a couple of days without eating. So we try to mimic that as much as possible here. Uh, but on average, anywhere from about seven to nine pounds. Once again, if you guys have any questions, just raise your hand, shout them out if I'm not looking at you. Just let us know, okay? Our our like he's still hanging out, so we got some more. Sorry, your question. Our tiger spikes like behavior to come in the earlier. Just you know that's true or not? But I'll have her. You know, they're very distinct. They're very distinct. It varies between tigers, so you can use them as an identifying factor. Good question. Chelsea's going to be 12 in June. 
Our male Tommy just turned 14. She's she's mellow today. Usually she's a little more like like I said, just like humans, they have their days. Hi, pretty girl. But Chelsea's from Toronto, the Toronto Zoo. Yeah, she performs up. I mean, every time I've been at her, she would perform that. I think it have to do with her cycling, too. Just, just like the best sometimes. <laughs> Her cubs, she had a male and a female. I believe one of them went to Disney, Animal Kingdom, and the other one went to Akron Zoo in Ohio, which is actually where our male is from. You can do it. I know you can. Alright, how about this? Good. You gotta turn around. Different type of flora. I guess you wanted the milk after all. You played it yesterday. She wants the milk. It's like a heart. Oh, look at Yeah, but when she puts her hand up that, like that, you guys can see her paw really well. So the keepers can check and make sure there's nothing in there, make sure she's okay. <laughs> How long has she been kept in the zoo? Yeah. You know it's hard to be a Sumatra Has she been here. kept in the zoo? <laughs> she's been in the zoo her whole life. So she came from another zoo. She's going to be 12 in June. So does that make a pretty tame? I guess this is pretty tame. She's still quite a wild. Oh, really? Yeah, she may have poor behavior, so she's developed a good relationship with the people. Okay, okay. Into their early 20s, yeah. Pretty easily once they lose that friend, they can look pretty short of losing their home. The lines are going down. It's like, I already did it for you once. No, we here at the Zoo Atlanta, it's always protected contact. So nothing much less than that. Yeah, pretty much any um, potentially dangerous animal. So all the big cats, the bears, panda bears, too, all that good stuff. Zoo Atlanta is part of the Jason Zoo Aquarium, so they have a Um, just a general jump from right here without getting any sort of momentum going. It's roughly, what, about two, maybe three feet straight up vertical. Um, obviously, if she gets a lot of speed going, she can jump a lot farther. Um, they have a very nice spring to them. But typically, um, during the day, they're going to sleep a lot, just like our lions do. They sleep roughly about, you know, 15, 20 hours a day, and then they're just going to be up pretty much hunting closer to the food is now gone, evening so time, out. early morning time. It's a lot she graced us with the so that was exciting. Bye, Chelsea. Bye, Chelsea. Um, I'm not sure. Katie, what's the gestation period for Smash and Tigers? Do you know? It's shorter than ours, so it's only a couple of months. Five, six, five, six, okay, yeah, that's what I thought too. I wasn't 100% sure. <laughs> 